Well lads, what's the crack and welcome back to another new video on KCFG and well, the World Cup is now over and that means one thing, the Premier League is back. Yes, the Premier League predictions are finally back here on the channel. It's been a while so it has, it has been a while but finally I'm glad to see them back and I'm really looking forward to making this one of course. It is the best match week in my opinion of the Premier League season, it is Christmas match week, it's, it's in the festive period of the year and everyone will be in a festive mood coming into this a few decent matches here and i'm predicting a few brilliant matches uh, that'll be remembered for years to come maybe uh, in, the, in this match week so before we do jump into it make sure you are subscribed to the channel 95 percent of you watch my videos are still not subscribed so if you are a new viewer make sure you do subscribe make sure you like the video as well it really does help and support the channel and make sure you click the bell so you're notified when they upload a new video so enjoy today's uh, Christmas uh, Premier League match week predictions. Well, then the first match of the Premier League, uh, the first match since the World Cup started in the Premier League, it is Brentford versus Tottenham. A bit of a London derby here that got us kicked off. That is nice, but I mean here, Tottenham have a World Cup champion in their team, uh, Hugo Lloris, so he won't be. Uh, oh my, what am I on about? What am I on about Hugo Lloris being a world champion? Uh, but here, he won't be available for this match anyway, so... I didn't actually think about that, so maybe Brantford do have a bit of a chance in this one, but I'll go by my prediction that I did say uh, when I was making them, so I'm going to go with a 2 0 win here for Tottenham. Uh, and now that, I, now that I've realised the race won't be here, Ivan Tony will probably pull off a masterclass, but you know, I'm going to stick with a 2 0 win for Tottenham here. I'm going to say both goals come from Harry Kane in this one, you know. He didn't look at his very best in the World Cup, I didn't think him well. He could be low on confidence after that penalty miss against France, so. You know, I'm still going to go with Harry Key and I'm going to say he'll make a comeback in this one and he will score a brace in this one. 2 0 win here for Tottenham. That's a little roll with, uh, of course, now it probably won't happen, but you know, that's a little roll with it anyway. So Brentford 0, Tottenham 2, that's what I've gone with them in the first match back in the Premier League. Next match then, we've got another London derby, Crystal Palace taking on Fulham. Now, another interesting one here, in my opinion. Crystal Palace haven't looked good enough this season, whereas Fulham have looked pretty good and well. Alexander Mitrovic should be back for Fulham in this one, and that's what I'm going to say will get them over the line. Yes, I'm going to say that at Selhurst Park, uh, Fulham get a brilliant smash and grab 1-0 victory in this one. The goal coming from, of course, you called it the serve, Alexander Mitrovic and well. It's going to come inside the first 10 minutes, I do believe, of the match, so I'm going to say Fulham will have a very early lead in, the, in this one and well Crystal Palace will just not find a way through and they'll have to lose all three points in this one and a pretty poor defeat here. I'm going to say Crystal Palace will look really poor in this one. Fulham will just be the better side overall and well the Cottages will get a massive three points here as Crystal Palace will fall under even more pre ser serious pressure. So Fulham won, Crystal Palace nil. that's what I've gone with them in this one. Next match then we've got is Everton v Wolves. Now who would have guessed these two would be in a relegation scrap by Christmas time? Not me anyway, but you know, both these sides have really struggled this season. You know, I'm just after checking the league table and Wolves are bottom. I mean, I didn't know Wolves are bottom. I didn't know they were down that bad, but you know, have they got a new manager? I'm not too sure if they have got a new manager. It's been that long since the Premier League's on and just forget everything. Like, so, you know what, I'm going to say... This is going to be a really boring match, you know. Both these sides are aren't haven't got much good attackers playing in this one. I mean, Everton's good attacker Calvert Lewin, he's injured for this one, I do believe. So it's going to be a boring one. This one, I'm going to say a goalless draw here, good at some park, and well, both these sides will have to settle with a point here. I mean, will it take a point? I mean, it'll be better than a defeat for both sides, in my opinion. But I mean, overall, both these sides will be out looking for a win. But honestly. It just won't happen and it'll finish nil nil in this one. Honestly, lads, out of all the matches here on at 3 o'clock on uh, the 26th, just don't watch this one. Don't watch it. It's going to be a bore fest. Nothing's going to happen. And well, just save yourself 90 minutes of boredom and then go out and enjoy your 26th. Look at your Christmas presents that you got or something. Just do not watch this match. So, Everton nil, Wolves nil. That's what I've gone with here as it's going to be a bore fest in Goodison Park. Next match then, we've got us Leicester versus Newcastle. An interesting one here, of course. I mean, I, saw, I was watching Newcastle's uh, Carabao Cup win over Bournemouth and well. They did look like the better side in that one, definitely. Bournemouth didn't look that good, in my opinion. Leicester, though, on the other side, they did also get three in the Carabao Cup. It's worth mentioning a good win 
a red end kid on Scott Dempsey and well the Foxes are looking pretty good here now I tell you what Leicester do have a very good record against Newcastle but Newcastle are definitely in a lot better form than the Foxes right now so I was kind of caught up in something here I just didn't know what to predict for the match so in the end of uh eventually gone with a draw in this one I'm going to say it finishes Leicester 1, Newcastle 1 in this one. It's going to be an interesting match, definitely. A very tight one and a very entertaining one as well. I'm going to say the go first goal will come on the R mark. It'll be not much going on in the first R. But then I'm going to say substitute Jamie Vardy will manage to break the deadlock at the King Power Stadium. And he'll send Leicester in a ahead in this one. So Leicester will have a 1-0 lead in this one. Before I'm going to say with about 10 minutes ago. They, um, they uh, surrender that lead and well Newcastle will equalise through Callum Wilson yes I'm going to say Callum Wilson will salvage a point in the end here for the Mike Pies I mean especially near the end of the match I'm going to say it's going to be really action packed both sides looking like they're going to win at last minute but just won't happen and well both these sides are going to have to settle on a point here so Leicester won Newcastle won that's what he's gone with then in this one next match then we've got to Southampton v Brighton now, obviously, the bookies' favourite here would be Brighton. Of course, they're looking pretty good this season, whereas Southampton have really struggled. They're currently second last here, and Nathan Jones hasn't got a dig, uh, has, he hasn't got an easy start to life at the South Coast, hasn't he? But you know what? I mean, Alexi McAllister won't be here for this match. I mean, at least I don't think he'll be here for this match. I mean, would he, would he really want to be away at Southampton? Is it after Christmas? I don't think so. So, I can just assume that McAllister will not be available for this one. But you know what? Southampton's got a really good record against Brighton. And despite them being awful this season, I'm going to say they got a 2-0 victory here over the Seagulls. I mean, Brighton just did lose on penalties to Charlton Athletic in the uh, Carabao Cup, whereas Southampton just about squeaked past Lincoln City there. So, you know what? I'm going to say Southampton managed to get a 2-0 victory in this one. I'm going to say it'll be 1-0 at the break. James Ward-Price scoring another... Uh, I think he'll score from the spot, actually. And, well, that'll just spark something on the Southampton side. And after that penalty goal, I'm going to say the Saints just start to dominate this one. And then I'm going to say with about 20 minutes to go in the match, uh, the Saints just managed to finish off Brighton. You know, Brighton will have a high line-up, but just to lose the ball in the counter-attack, and then Southampton will start the counter-attack. A ball is squared, and Che Adams manages... To double the lead, making a 2 0 to Southampton in this one. Yes, I think just something's going to spark in the Southampton team in this one. They're going to get all three points in this one. It's going to be one of the big shocks of the match week. And well, the Saints will definitely be back on the right track after that one. So Southampton 2, right in there. It's, a bit, it's out there, definitely. It's a bit of a shock. But I tell you what, I think Southampton just about have enough to get it done in this one. Next match, then we've got is Aston Villa taking on Liverpool. Another interesting one here. Can Liverpool finally have a better second half of the season? And they'll need to start off here with a good win away at Aston Villa. A team who can prove to be tricky as well. So, you know, I'm going to say that Liverpool just about get the win in this one. I'm going to say they win 2-1 here away at Villa Park. I'm actually going to say after 20 minutes, Aston Villa take the 1-0 lead. And I'm going to say it comes from the Polish right-back, Matty Kasia of all players. I'm going to say it's a good corner whipped in by Douglas Louise. And Cash gets his noggin on it. And well, a, a bad keeping by Allison. And I'm going to say at half time, then Aston Villa will be in the driver's seat 1 0 up against Liverpool. They'll be looking pretty good. But then in the second half, that's when it all crumbles. 10 minutes into the second half, a player who's been craving one of these Premier League matches for a month now, Mohamed Salah, he will get in the score sheet to equalise before them at about 20 minutes ago. He'll get in the score sheet again, getting a brace in this one, and getting Liverpool all three points secured against Aston Villa so Liverpool 2 Aston Villa 1 Villa will definitely look good and Liverpool might crumble under pressure again but overall though I can just see Sally getting it done for the Reds and just about squeaking them over the line past Aston Villa and then the final match then of uh, St Stephen's Day it is Arsenal v West Ham an interesting one here of course I mean as both these sides have quite a, a few injuries uh, quite a few players out of this match so they do so this could be a very tight one indeed, and well, Arsenal have a really good record against West Ham, but we know, I mean, of course, with a few players out, this one could go either way, in my opinion, but you know what, I'm going to say Arsenal continue that good record and get a 1-0 victory, just about squeaking past West Ham in this one, and just about getting all three points here at the Emirates Stadium. I'm going to say 
the only goal comes uh, right before half time by Bukayo Saka, a player who really did shine in the World Cup. He's going to uh, continue that good form here, getting the only goal of the match here. And well, he'll get a good 1 0 victory here for Arsenal. It's not going to be pretty, it's going to be a pretty ugly match here, definitely, and pretty stale and boring at times as well. But overall, I'm going to say that the Gunners just about squeak through and get all three points in this one. So Arsenal 1, West Ham 0, that's what they're going with then in this one. Now we go on to the 27th matches and the first one being Chelsea hosting Bournemouth. Now an interesting one here and I'll tell you what, Chelsea are missing quite a lot of players. And while with the lack of attacking threats up top, they haven't got really a good goal scorer up top and they're a bit dodgy at the back from the last time they did play. I tell you what here, Bournemouth have been a bogey team for to, to Chelsea over the past wee while. And you know what? I'm going to say that the Cherries are going to do it here. I'm going to say that finishes Chelsea nil, Bournemouth 2 in this one. I know it's a Stamford Bridge and all, but still, I can see Bournemouth getting all three points in this one. And well, Graham Potter will be under serious trouble at Chelsea already. So, I'm going to say that both goals will come in the first half. Dominic Solanke, former Chelsea player, I'm going to say he scores inside the first four minutes of the match. It's going to be an early start. Before then, with 15 minutes gone, Lewis Cook scores a free kick. Yes, I'm going to say it's poor keeping my Mendy, and Lewis Cook will score a free kick. So 15 minutes in, Bournemouth will have a 2-0 lead in this one. Chelsea will dominate the match overall. Well, will dominate. They won't do much with the ball, really. They'll have the ball most of the time. But Bournemouth will be really good in this one, I think. And they'll get over the line here, keeping the clean sheet as well. And it's going to be a Christmas miracle here for Bournemouth. So Bournemouth 2, Chelsea 0. Chelsea will be under serious pressure here. And well, Bournemouth will be cruising. What a win it'll be. And all three points next from Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Next match then we've got is Manchester United taking on Nottingham Forest. An interesting one here, of course. Uh, United have looked pretty good this season. Nottingham Forest on the other side. Uh, about 20 plus signings. I wonder how much they'll get for Christmas here. But you know... It's gonna be. It won't be a good match here for Nottingham Forest, in my opinion. Of course, Jesse Lingard returning to his former club. He scored in the cup against the uh, Blackburn, I think it was. And well, he's gonna to want to prove something here to United that they shouldn't have sold him. But you know what? Will he prove anything? No, he won't. He'll prove absolute nilch. And well, it's gonna be a three nil win here for United in this one. It's gonna be a pretty comfortable win as United cruise the victory. I'm gonna say Marcus Rashford, a player who's looked really good over the past few matches. He'll get a brace in this one before half time. Before then, in the second half, Bruno Fernandes will get the third, and that'll pretty much do it. United will dominate this one. For Forest will barely get a sniff, really. And well, three goals, three points in a clean sheet. That is going to be a pretty good Christmas here for Manchester United. So United three, Forest nil. That's where we've gone with then in this one. In the final match, then we've got in the twenty eighth. It is Leeds United taking on Manchester City. Now, Leeds United, have you seen the amount of injuries they've got? Oh my goodness, they are they are literally, they're, like, half their squad is out of this one. And the only player who won't be available for City here is Julian Alvarez, and that's because he's still out celebrating because Argentina won the World Cup. I tell you what here, Man City's got an Erling Haaland in this side who's been craving Premier League football for one month. And it's going to be scary. And it's going to be scary. And with Leeds United littered with injuries and they've been inconsistent this season, I'm going with a 5-1 victory here for Manchester City at Elland Road. I'm going to say Erling Haaland scores a hat-trick in this one. A hat-trick in the first half as well. And Kevin De Bruyne will get two goals in this one. De Bruyne is also a player. He wants to prove something after getting slated after Belgium's early exit in the World Cup. So he's going to get a brace in this one as well. It's going to be the Haaland and the Bruyne show. They're going to both be popping off. It's going to be 4 0 City at the break. And well, Lee's, uh, Alan Road will already start emptying after the 40th minute. And well, it's going to be ugly. I'm going to say, though, a uh, former City Academy player, Jack Harrison, will get one back in the last minutes of the match. But honestly, it won't mean anything. Leeds United fans, enjoy your Christmas because I tell you what, on the 28th here, it's going to be, it's going to be an absolute, it's going to be a whitewash here. It's going to be a bloodbath for Leeds United. And well, Haaland will just hurry as a new one. He's going to tear you apart. Just you watch. Man City 5. Leeds United 1. That's what I'm saying here. As Man City will absolutely destroy Leeds United. Just you watch. It's going to happen. And that will end today's Premier League predictions everybody. I hope you enjoy. Remember to like, share and subscribe and turn on notifications. Thank you all for supporting the channel once again. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all once again in KTFG.
Bye, bye, same.